Living in fear of turning red is no way to live. You can visit it for a minute, but then you got to move on. You got to move through. Hey everybody, welcome back. Or if this is your first time, welcome. I'm April and I'm the founder of Blushing Phoenix and I'm so glad you're here. First of all, to know that you are so much more than redness and you are not alone. And you, my friend, hold the power to overcome any of your negative thoughts or beliefs around turning red and what that means and what it means about you. You can overcome that. Today, specifically, I wanna talk to you about how I was attending an improv class and how I think that can really help people overcome urethrophobia. For those of you who don't know, if this is your first time joining and you're not privy to what urethrophobia means, that is the chronic fear of blushing. It is a fear of turning red in front of other people. Usually it is, it is tied to a social anxiety. It is tied to fear of judgment. A lot of times people who consider themselves empathic or people who are people pleasers tend to deal with a lot of chronic blushing issues. And so urethrophobia is just the fear of turning red. And what happens is when you have a flushing or blushing moment, or you get called out in school or in front of a group of people, the next thing you know, anytime you're in these social environments or you feel like all eyes are on you, the next thing you know, you are turning red. You are a tomato. You start turning bright and then your nervous system is going nuts and you have no idea what's going on and you just want to run away and hide until eventually you just fall back into the shadows of life and you have nothing and you feel nothing or you just feel super depressed because you're too afraid to get out and go live your life and share your gifts and do all the things because you're afraid you're going to turn red and that's a very real fear for a lot of people myself included in the past but i did overcome urethrophobia feel free to check out a lot of my uh, videos and it, the whole journey is here documented on YouTube. Okay, so for the purpose of this video, I want to tell you about how I was at an event recently, well, a couple months ago, and we had somebody come in and teach us improv. I have never signed up for an improv class. I, uh, It's not really something that I have even considered. I have, It just was an event at the event that I was at. And I want to tell you how I think improv can really help people who are struggling with chronic blushing and urethrophobia. The class that I went to specifically, our instructor was fantastic. I'm actually going to link his information below in case you're interested in reaching out to him, but he was fantastic. And what he really taught us was that in improv, you cannot be afraid of looking dumb because you're going to look dumb. You're going to look silly, but so much of feeling like you're going to look silly is because you think you're going to look silly. The instructor never thought we were dumb. This is like his world. He thought it was great. He thought it was fantastic. It's I was there at a work event. And so it normally we're in a very professional mode, even though we're cool and we're, we're laid back and we chill um, and, and get to know each other on a more personal level. It was something about acting or making things up and using our imagination in front of our professional people that just made you feel really dumb. I personally, it was, it was a week long event and it was one of my favorite events at the event. So the, the event I went to was a week long, but the improv was just one like three hour segment on one day. And when I look back on the event, that was one of my favorite things about being there is because a few things. Improv makes you come forward in front of the room, which is so many people's biggest fear, whether they blush or not, they're afraid to be up in front of people and to be looked at. So you have all eyes on you. So you're in this major exposure moment. Then you have to use your imagination. And for people who blush in just adults in general, I think that a lot of times we lose our sense of creativity and we lose our outlet. We lose that imagination. And so therefore we are suppressing a part of ourselves that really wants to get out and be free. So in improv, that is invited back into the room where I think that as we are growing up and we're in the workplace and we're climbing our corporate career ladders, we're told to shut that piece down. Like, cool. It's okay to be imaginative and creative in like marketing or uh, maybe in um, some sort of expressive creative outlet in your job, but to really have an imagination and kind of make things up on the spot and, and have play is not something we hear a lot about as adults. So, Part of going to the improv class is that you had to break through those mental barriers that tell you that you look dumb, that people care, that people are judging you, and you have to be able to be imaginative. So in improv, if the instructor is teaching you to come up with some sort of narrative, you are pulling this out of your mind. The first hour was really just him coaching us through how to let go. Like, does that not relate to you? I feel like that was so big to, to, for me was to know that He's telling us to let go. 
And it's so hard to break down those mental barriers in the beginning, but it's possible. I think sometimes we get stuck up on the fact that it's like, it's so hard. I'm not saying anything's going to be easy. I'm saying don't get stuck on the fact that it's hard. Keep going. <laughs> of course it's going to be hard, but don't let that stop the pursuit of what you're going for. So eventually a couple hours in, we, we keep doing these exercises and then he would call certain people up and sometimes at random. So you didn't know when you were going to get picked. There was so much anxiety in the beginning because you're like, oh my gosh, I have to come out of character for this and I have to create a new character for this. But by the like third or fourth time of sit as you're sitting in that anxiety and he's pulling you up and he's reassuring you and he's validating you and the team is laughing and having a good time and you realize other people are up here making a fool out of themselves too, you start to lose that mental hold and you start to fall and, and, and let go and fall into this creative source that you just tap into and you just don't care. A few notes that I wrote from that um, improv class, I'm gonna read them to you now. Um, I wrote that this is embarrassing, you feel unprepared, it's gonna break perfectionism. It's whatever you want it to be. Nobody can tell you that your narrative or your story is wrong because improv is yours. It's what you have pulled out of, out of thin air, truly. And going back to breaking perfectionism, for a lot of people who struggle with urethrophobia and chronic blushing, there is this sense of, I need to be perfect. I need to look perfect. There cannot be anything wrong with me or else there will be judgment. And if there is judgment, that equals death to me. And that is unacceptable. I cannot function if I'm judged. It's kind of the root of what I've discovered for, for myself at least. And so with perfectionism, perfectionism is showing up as a character, um, as this facade of who you've created so that nobody will judge you and it'll keep you very safe and accepted among your peers or, or the people around you. With improv, you are breaking perfectionism. You cannot be perfect in improv. There is no perfect because you are literally making it up on the spot. So you may stumble or you may not fully understand the narrative that maybe somebody else said and now you're playing into it. I am telling you, if you've never been to an improv class, you should absolutely check it out, consider it, look into a local improv um, class in your area because I think that you will find that by putting yourself in something so uncomfortable and something that might be really, really off the charts for you in, in, in accordance to like who I am, Forget about that. Move that stuff to the side and think about where you want to be and who you want to be. Because living in fear of turning red is no way to live. You can visit it for a minute, but then you got to move on. You got to move through. And it's not by just saying, I don't want to be a blusher anymore, or I don't want to deal with this anymore. It's these little things about changing the language around it. And I know I do it too, because I just forget. But instead of saying I am a blusher, it is I have had blushing or my skin turns red. It's, it's not saying that I am you're not owning that you are this blusher. You are saying that this is something that I have previously struggled with and I am overcoming this fear of turning red. Whatever it is you have to speak into existence, speak it into existence. But don't just stay where you are. There's gotta be this turning point. And hopefully if you're watching this video and you found this channel and you're going through the videos here, it's because you're tired. You are tired of feeling small. You are tired of robbing yourself of the life you're supposed to be living. And so what's standing between you and the life you wanna live? You are standing between you and the life you want to live. Or maybe it's the environment that you're in or the people that you're around. But either way, you have the choice to you. You get to make the choices of these people make me feel this way. I'm moving on from this. These environments make me feel this way. I'm moving on from this. You still get to have the power and control over so many of those things. And even if you can't make the radical changes right this second, you could start making small changes, implement small things every day that can lead to that ultimate change for you in the end. So the big thing is, is, is to start showing up is if you have to talk to a therapist, if you need to watch every video on this channel, go right ahead. They are free resources here for you. My gift to you of telling you how I overcame this journey on my own. So if I could do it, you could do it. I believe that for you. And so improv class, I am shocked by how much freedom that could bring to me 
And so I wanted to share that with you so that you can look into that for yourself because I believe that if more people put themselves in this uncomfortable place where there's creativity and imagination. It's not just, you know, therapy can be uncomfortable and, you know, anything that makes you feel vul vulnerable is uncomfortable. But the difference with improv is that you're actually playing also. So to be uncomfortable and play, and if you do it long enough with the right support around you, like for us, we had a great coach, eventually you start to forget that child starts to come back out, that person that doesn't care so much. That, that original person that you, you feel like you're trying to find your way back to sometimes, they come out and you get to connect back to that essence of yourself, that innocence, the fun, the playful, the imaginative, and everything else just fades away because you don't care because you're not so stuck in here. You're actually living in your body in the present, fully alive as yourself. I'm telling you, go check it out. Try it for yourself. If you've done this before, let me know in the comments how that worked out for you. And for some people, you may have done it in the past, but then once you started dealing with turning red, you may have stopped because you felt like you were so embarrassed. Leave that in the comments below as well because I'm curious to know what made you shy away from it. I know that I've talked to people a lot here on Blushing Phoenix that have told me that they are performers or they sing or they dance or whatever it is that puts them in the public eye. But because of urethrophobia and chronic blushing, they actually shied away from that because they didn't want to be seen anymore. And therefore, they are literally melting away into a corner, feeling rendered useless because they're no longer expressing their gifts and their creativity. And they're no longer having fun and imagining and doing all the things that make you feel so alive. And if you've watched some of my recent videos, I talk a lot about how, for me, I get splotchy on my chest and neck. And I have discovered for myself that a lot of that has to do with my throat chakra and being able to speak and get things off your chest and to just say what you need to say and express yourself the way you need to express yourself. And I really believe for myself, as I have come out of that bondage and found that freedom for myself again, that a lot of that redness has reduced or gone away in most cases. Urethrophobia, the fear of turning red is no longer there. And uh, that that is liberating because we have the power and control over what we believe about it. And therefore those thoughts become our reality. And if we can put the thoughts in there to begin with, we can put new thoughts in there and create new firing neurons in our brain. I don't know all that stuff. I'm just a random girl on the internet. Check with your doctor about anything, <laughs> but just from my own personal experience in reference of my own story, we can reset that we can start over or whatever the terminology is. I don't know. All I know is I don't live under the weight and the pressure and the fear of what I was under three years ago when I started this journey to overcome urethrophobia. So all of that to say, I hope you all have a fantastic day. Feel free to check out some other videos if you are needing those resources and I will see you in my next video.